Final Four crossover, speed versus efficiency. You're locked on. You are Locked On Yukon, your daily podcast on the Yukon Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Yukon and Locked On Bama your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. With me today is Luke Robinson from his from a, for this Locked On crossover special. Luke, speed versus efficiency. First question to you is, what are Bama fans' thoughts right now on this team and kind of the general mood around this Final Four run? Right now, it's pretty euphoric. I mean, uh, you know, obviously UConn's been there several times, uh, but uh, I guess your first time was back in the 90s, was it not? 99, yep. A lot of people, too, a lot of people may remember that from way back when. Um, but it's been – UConn since then has won a lot of national championships, been to a lot of Final Fours, and so it's sort of become ho-hum. But for us, uh, Alabama, what people don't understand is that Alabama has a pretty incredible basketball history. Now, it's not Kentucky. but we, And unfortunately, we're in a league that has Kentucky in it. Kentucky dominates the SEC. They always have. But Alabama is either the second or third best program historically in the SEC. People are going to – you know, sort of be like, what? But that's true. And um, Alabama's got a ton of uh, SEC tournament wins, ton of SEC titles compared to the rest of the SEC outside of Kentucky. But they've got, they've had some All-Americans. Now they've been a number one seed in the tournament. Um, That was last year. And they've done some nice things, right? But they've never been to the Final Four. And unfortunately, that's sort of what you're judged on. Like if you ever get to a final four, people, whenever you get back to the tournament, people are like they could, they've been there before, you know? And so that's just the way it is. I mean, miss I've got, I'm a good buddy with a Mississippi state alum, Bart Heitch. Um, his team went in 1994 and like everywhere he goes, he never has to buy a beer in Starkville again. I mean, it's, it's something that lives with you forever. And, uh, so, yeah, Alabama fans are pretty fired up. We, we almost don't know what to do with ourselves. Um, and it's sort of funky. And in a way, it worries me even a little more about this game that we as a collective fan base, I hope it doesn't rub off on the team, that we're so excited about just being there that yeah. we're overwhelmed in the moment when we get there. No, that's a that's a great point. Uh, you mentioned 1994. That's a, that For UConn fans, that's a rough one, man. That, that game against uh, – Mississippi State. Uh, I, I think I was 13 years old, and I remember it pretty vividly. That was that was a tough. We had Danielle Marshall, uh, fifth oh. pick in the draft, just an absolute monster of a player. Just couldn't be. I think it was Dante Jones was was the was their was Dante their Jones, big star. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough memory to 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 bring bring up, but uh, good good stuff there. Yeah, Eric um, Peter. Yes. Yep. Very good. Very good. Very good team. Mississippi State um, back in the day. Um, this this matchup is really interesting to me. I was talking to you pre-show about, you know, people look at the numbers and the analytics of things. And I know Nate Oates is a huge analytics guy, as is Dan Hurley. Um, so on Ken Palm, everyone uses Ken Palm. If you're unfamiliar with it, it's a system that is kind of a predictive system that is like if the game was played tonight. Like, so these are all updated stats. The adjusted offense is the amount of points a team scores per 100 possessions. So UConn is number one, and Alabama is number three. And there's like a a tiny margin between the two. So it might as well be one versus two. Purdue is number two if you're interested. So I'm curious about this number. UConn is defensively number four in Ken Palm. Alabama currently, I know they played better, but is 104. How does does Bama make up that gap? Because it's similar to the way Illinois came into the game against UConn in the Elite Eight where they were 84th in adjusted defense and number three in offense at that time. So we saw how that went. Not predicting that happening in the Final Four, but you know what What do you see that can kind of mitigate that? Alabama's got to be really hot. Um, the, defensively, at, at this point, at this stage in the game, you are what you are. I mean, yeah. Alabama's played a little better defensively, there's no doubt. But let's also call a spade a spade. R.J. Davis had maybe his worst game of the year. Part of that was because Alabama played better. But part of that was because sometimes you have a bad night. 
Um, yep. the, Clemson, they had already beaten Alabama, by the way, in the regular season, and they are more of a rough and tumble kind of team, and they just sort of brawlers. They they don't have a lot of explosiveness, and Alabama was ex- and Alabama just had an answer for them. Every time Clemson, you thought they were going to crawl back in it. By the way, Clemson had a thirteen point lead in this game. Alabama sure. comes back, and um, Clemson hits a three. Alabama comes and hits a three. Clemson hits another three. Alabama hits another three. Clemson misses one. Alabama hits another one, and it just takes the air out of you. And that's what Alabama is going to have to do against this UConn squad. We don't have anybody that can match up with somebody that's seven two and can has great footwork around the hoop. We just don't. Yep. Um, and that's again, that's okay. Not many teams do. Um, like how many people can guard a seven foot four, three hundred pound? behemoth like Purdue has not many especially if you let him be in the lane for 22 seconds but that's right um UConn is also incredibly well coached they're very experienced they're 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 seasoned they're they're hardened um it's gonna all we can do we've got to I'm not trying to paint this woe is me picture right because I'm an Alabama fan and I'm gonna go in there with all the hope in the world I'm also a realist that UConn is a better team. I think that that is very clear. But if Alabama is hot, if they are hitting their shots from beyond the arc, and if they can just make UConn spread that defense out a little bit, and if they can make UConn get a little tired, you know, by just running them to death, they'll have a shot. But there is a reason ESPN matchup predictor says Alabama's only got a 28.6% chance of winning this thing. And, um, And there's a reason UConn is 11 and a half point favorite. Is that what it is? I thought I saw it today. I saw a couple numbers. Twelve and a half. Is it is it steady right now at eleven and a half? I mean, I'm I'm looking at a live update of it, and uh, the money line is UConn minus nine hundred, and, and UConn minus eleven and a half. Now, frankly, I think that line is is a little low, but the way UConn is playing, I'm <laughs> I can't be any bigger Alabama fan. I don't want people to right. think, but I'm not going to come on here and say, yeah, we got UConn. I mean, that they're good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Here's the thing that somebody else was talking to me about it, that, you know, look, even I'm going to tell you a quick story before you go to your Please. library. My son goes to Arizona state and um, he just loved being out West and he's at Arizona state right now. And so for Christmas, I got him two tickets to the final four because I just thought, Hey, he's in Phoenix. I'll go with him. And he's never been, it'll be fun. And he's going to work for the diamondbacks later on and whatever. So cool. he's a big sports nut. So he's so excited about it. I had no idea Alabama would be there. I'm going anyway. Um, so, like, for me, this is all gravy. I'm so fired up. And the fact that we get there and break that glass ceiling, I'm like, okay, now I feel like we can get there some other time. If UConn buries Alabama, which could happen, then I, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this moment. This Now, I want the team to win. I'm going to be pulling for them. I'm going to be wearing all my Alabama stuff and whatever. But – uh, UConn's just really, really good, and it's going to be a tough matchup for Alabama. But if Mark Mark Sears has been willing this team, and then not on top of that, Mark Sears has been great. He has been steadily great. Somebody else has stepped up in some portion of every game so far. Grant Nelson had his moment in the sun. Rylan Griffin has had his moment in the sun. Uh, Nick Pringle, who really is not known for shooting well, he channeled his inner Bo Kimball from Loyola Marymount hitting those one-arm free throws. He's, I mean, th- there have been some great moments for this team. So you never say never. I'm just being a realist about it. Listen, man, um, before we drive into uh, players to watch, you just you just kind of teased it with a bunch of players from your side. Um, yeah, I, I – I, I echo that, and awesome that you're going to the Final Four. Awesome that you're going with your son. That's 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 super cool of you. Um, my thing is the opposite side of what you're talking about. The happy to be there. You don't want that to rub off on your team. I don't want UConn to come in and have what happened to. I hate to say this team's name, but we're starting to kind of get into that territory where we're the Duke of the uh, or the Kentucky of of college basketball now, going for our sixth national championship, um, where we get kind of side, you know, sideswiped, if you will, by a team that comes in on their first time, like UConn did in 1999. UConn went to the Final Four in 99, beat Ohio State, beat Duke, beat an incredible Duke team that kind of fits this same profile uh, and won their first national championship. So that's what I don't want to see happen, and we'll dive into what players to watch and give you some insight after this.
When you're hiring for small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that write right write for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that have that many candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your jobs for free terms and conditions may apply. All right, Luke, let's talk about some players to watch for UConn right off the bat. You mentioned him already. Um, the most impactful player in college basketball, not named Zach Eady. And I think it's a lot closer than people think uh, is Donovan Klingon. He's seven two ish, seven three, whatever you want to say. He's big. I don't. I don't, I don't care whether they list him at seven two or seven three. He's got the size of Zach Eady, but the the footwork of a ballerina. He doesn't look super fast, but when he when he gets you pinned down low, he's a lot quicker than people think. Um, he handled that Illinois uh, attack. They really kind of tried to get into him and really tried to kind of create foul trouble, which I think was the plan uh, for for Brad Underwood's team. Do you think? In in Nate Oates's analytic world, only Estrada shoots mid range jump shots. Everyone else is three pointers, and they're looking for you know easy twos. How does that? How does his presence affect that? And are they going to try to? You think they're going to try to bring him out in pick and roll? You know how are they going to uh, negate Donovan Klingon's defensive presence? Boy, I don't know that you do negate it. I mean, he's he's seven two, and he's got this gigantic wingspan too. I'm not exactly yep. sure what it is, but he he it looks like he's got six elbows. I mean, he's just you know his <laughs> arms are so long. I mean, he's like a spider. Um, it look Grant Nelson will be matched up with him a lot. I'm sure Pringle will be too. Uh, what I worry about with him more than anything is his getting somebody like a Nick Pringle into foul trouble very early. Uh, maybe even a Grant Nelson, who Grant Nelson is the opposite of Zach Eady. He gets the quickest whistle in the country, and Zach Eady never gets a whistle. So, um, right, right. Yeah, I, look, by the way, I have nothing against Zach Eady. I, I mean, I, he's sort of a joy to watch, but let's also be honest. I mean, he he gets pretty good, favorable calls. Um, and Luke, let me let me stop you right there for one second because I'm going to mention this too. Uh, UConn fans don't also hate Zach Eady. I think what, and my my wife, who is a Tennessee Vols fan, we can get to that. We can talk about that another time. So she's watching that game and she pays attention, but she wasn't super into college basketball this season. She did say, uh, she was like, how does he not get called for fouls? That's the biggest thing. So a casual college basketball fan like my wife watches this game and says, how does a guy this size not get called for fouls, but gets the most calls? That's what I think people are frustrated. And it's not that he's he shouldn't get any calls because he's a monster. He's going to get hit. But that's because Donovan Klingon, same size, gets a pretty tough whistle as well. Continue. <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and I think that's what Alabama is going to have to try and do is get him in foul trouble somehow. The problem with that is the way you get a big man in trouble is in foul trouble is you go right into him and you go into the body. Right. Well, Alabama doesn't have a lot of guys, I think, that can do that without getting their shot blocked pretty cleanly. Um, this Alabama team is is can be really hot from beyond the arc, and I think that's you mentioned it that that's the thing that they're going to need to do is just keep their keep doing what they do. If you look at the shot chart against Clemson or against North Carolina, you'll see. I mean, it's a bunch of dots right by the basket, and then a ton of dots outside the arc. And I think that's what Alabama needs to do again. And look. There will be people out there saying, we live by the three, you die by the three. Well, that's that's sort of a cliche, and it's a bad cliche because there are teams that play nothing but slow-down basketball. Well, when you live by slow-down basketball, you die by slow-down basketball because if you get in trouble, uh, how do you shoot your way back into it, you know, if, you, right. if you're just a four corners kind of team? And so the good news about Alabama style is they can get down 13 early and then end up winning the game you know, pretty close to double digits or whatever it was against Clemson. So um, they can, you know, they, they can always shoot their way back into it. Now they can shoot their way back out of it, but that's just who they are. And uh, so I think what they're going, like you said, they're going to try and maybe bring him out from beyond the basket um, and and just do the, the best they can. Look, it it's going to be an uphill battle, uh, but they, they've just got to be hot. Now here's the other positive news that Alabama's already been out West for a long time now. And th this may not mean much, but it does 
to me in a sense because you're looking for anything that helps give you an advantage. Alabama's already played in Phoenix this year. They played against Arizona earlier at the Sun Stadium. Um, now, it's not, not the same as playing in Glendale in that massive right. arena. I've been there for a national championship game, and um, it's absolutely huge. I mean, I would much rather, by the way, this thing be in the Suns arena. I think that makes better atmosphere, but that's for another day. Um, sure. So I, hopefully, like the being in a cavernous stadium like that doesn't make for some bad shooting. Sometimes when you get in a big facility like that, I mean, for some reason, people just don't shoot well. It's just it throws yeah. off at everything. You're you're spot on. That I, that was my next question. Is do you think that's going to bother them? I think I, I honestly, Alex Caravan went on a, a. He's a friend of mine now. He there's a Connecticut Sports Scoreboard podcast, and he's a he does a regular spot for them. And they asked him about the balls, how how sticky they are. And Alex Caravan is a 40, 50, 90 guy. Great shooter. Uh, this this postseason, UConn hasn't shot well from three. We'll get into that in a second here. But he did say, he wasn't making an excuse. He said he thinks that they're a little bit overinflated. I wonder if that'll make any kind of case. Because, I mean, let's be honest, Alabama hasn't had a chance, hasn't had a problem shooting three. So I don't know if that's just, you know, they're they're not shooting well because it's just an off night, but that's three nights in a row where they've shot below 30% from three. Um, or, you know, it's just, it's, it's a ball issue. Uh, it's just, it's, it's all kind of conjecture, but, but the fact that it is in a, in a football stadium, it is, it is an interesting game because usually when you don't have that backdrop as a, as a guy who used to shoot a lot, you know, when I played back in the day, I can't imagine what that would feel like to, to shoot in like this open air environment where there's really nothing to kind of, kind of get your get your mindset there um but that'll be that'll be curious do you have any questions about about UConn and, and specifically kind of matchups that that you thought about or or no well besides Klingon who who am I supposed to be looking out for the most um you know I know Tristan Newton is a great player but is there somebody yep. else I mean look if, yeah you know if you were to ask the question the other way against Alabama I certainly could have a few different answers but um again being in the south being in Alabama I honestly, I just hadn't seen a lot of UConn basketball. So of course. Um, I've seen it in the NCAA tournament, and I certainly know UConn's very good. But because there's not a lot of crossover, like if UConn were playing Kentucky or whatever, I would watch it. But, it, you know, I like to watch more Southern area teams, teams that I know mm -hmm. Alabama will be playing. No, it's a great question. Um, there's two guys that I would circle, and then one that is kind of an X factor. And um, Tristan and Donovan are the two that get the most uh, pub. Tristan was a first team All American. Donovan is probably going to be a top ten player in the draft. And then you have Cam Spencer. Cam Spencer is a Rutgers transfer. He's a former. Um, he played at Loyola of uh, Loyola of Maryland. Also went to uh, Rutgers and then transferred to UConn. So he's a fifth year senior. Got that COVID year. So um, he's been transformative for this team. Another 50, 40, 90 guy. Fifty percent from the field. Forty percent from three. Ninety percent from the free throw line when Tristan Newton has a game like he had against Illinois he was 0 for 6 from the floor and was like 1 of 4 from the free throw line he he played awful shooting but he you know had good good assists good rebounds cam kind of takes over as the de facto playmaker uh he's a great three point shooter he's also Dan Hurley's mini me he is a psycho and i say that in all all with all love to cam spencer he's an absolute psycho on the court Bama fans are going to hate him, but if he was on your team, you'd love him because he is the type of guy in football terms, since I am talking to a Bama guy, who'd run through a brick wall for your team. Um, and he'll he'll antagonize the other players, but he'll he does it in a competitive way. Um, and again, he's the he's the guy you love to hate when he's not on your side. Those are the two that I would say. And then lastly, Steph Castle, who is our five star freshman, uh, could easily average twenty and ten if he played for a team that didn't have the quality of players that we have. Like let's say he played at, uh, you know, uh, Michigan or something like that. He would be you know a twenty and ten guy easy all day at the point guard position. That to me is the matchup that Alabama really has to see if if Mark Sears gets shut down to an extent the way he shut down um, uh, the Illinois point guard whose name escapes me off the top by Terrence Shannon. Um, he held him to two points. Yesterday, uh -huh. he got some points in in uh, in uh, garbage time. He came in averaging thirty. Steph is a six foot six point guard who will easily go in the in the lottery uh, in the NBA draft. Those are the players that I think they would have to most notably look for. And then a guy like Alex Caravan is a uh, is is if he starts making threes when UConn's in transition on the trail, 
that's when you guys are in trouble. Like that's that's when it could get out of hand. Um, that that would be my scouting report. Well, you frightened me even more. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I and, and I don't mean this in any way. Like when when Mark, I watched that Clemson game. It was Mark Sears played incredible. So if, when Bama fans see this, I'm I'm Mar I'm a Mark Sears fan. He is listed at six one. That means he's my height. He's five eleven. Let's just be honest, yeah. right? That's how basketball players work. He is a five eleven, incredible point guard in college basketball. Can easily get played in the pros if he gets in the right system. Um, but it's the difference in mentality when you go up against a kid at Clemson, whether it was Joe Girard or even Carter, who guarded him a little bit, versus Steph Castle, who's essentially 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, but moves just as fast as Mark Sears. So, like, it, you know, what's what's the phrase in, in, uh, in college football terms? Why does SEC football uh, typically have better – results is because okay so if you take away one thing there's another thing to back it up or if one guy gets hurt we have another five star to kind of put to, to bring in the mix unfortunately that's what UConn is right now for Bama it's it's a it's a college basketball wagon and there's there's not a lot of weaknesses let's put it that way no I totally agree I mean in, in a way this is like uh, UConn is sort of the Alabama of basketball and um you know it's, yeah. Alabama loses sometimes in football now they don't lose very often Trust me That's on this, um, but uh, <laughs> I've, at the same time, it has happened. And, uh, may, you know, look, Alabama and, and uh, UConn both played at Creighton this year. Creighton yep. beat UConn worse than they beat Alabama. I mean, in yep. fact, Alabama was in it till the very end. Uh, UConn did lose by 15 against Seton Hall this year. Um, unfortunately, and they lost to Kansas. Unfortunately, that's all of UConn's losses. Uh, right. So, you know, I think that um, it's just going to be a, a, an uphill battle. But again, you go out there and you play it. Nobody thought NC State would be in the Final Four either. So, um, agreed. Alabama certainly got a puncher's chance for sure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, before we get to the live read in the last segment here, this is a crazy stat I, I heard, and someone sent this to me. That's a UConn alum. Andrew Hurley is the son of Dan Hurley. He is a walk on for their team. He has played in every single NCAA tournament game over the last two years. That just shows you how much they've won by. And this is a crazy stat. There are 24 five-star recruits in the class of 2020. Andrew Hurley has logged more NCAA tournament minutes than 10 of them. That just oh shows God. you how good this UConn team is, that a, a walk-on at UConn has more minutes than 10 of the <laughs> five-star recruits of the 2020 class that are still playing. So that's something to, something to look for. Um, I'm not looking you guys, forward to it. I know mind. you're not looking forward to it, but we're gonna, we'll, talk, we'll talk about in the last segment, our predictions and, and what to expect in this game. But before we do, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn the volume down with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories about all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis and opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Passion and drive and patience i'm reading the wrong thing but that's okay we're gonna go to the next segment here we go here we go passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions may apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only. Available to U.S. customers. All right, Luke, last segment here, picks, predictions, anecdotes. We've given some folks some fancy numbers, storylines, fun stories, personal and whatnot. What do you expect to see Saturday? Um, the ball tips at 849 in Glendale. What's what's the what's the best case scenario for Alabama? 
I think the best case scenario is here's one thing. I love me some Mark Sears. And look, he set the single season scoring record for Alabama this year. And he's just, I mean, boy, it, you know, we started out at Ohio, transfers into Alabama. He's the only Alabama native on this roster. So he's a fan favorite and he just gets after it. He's he's a he's a little fire plug that just gets after it. But here's the thing, and he always gets his 21, 22 points. It's like every game, no matter what happens, he's going to get to 21, 22, or 23 points, right, no matter how bad he starts or how bad he finishes. But he lately it seems like, and I have no statistics to back this up, he starts kind of slow. But then he's the kind of guy that can go six for his next seven or hit six three-pointers in a row against Clemson. So I, I think the best-case scenario for Alabama is he starts big time. He starts on fire. Um, and maybe that'll give the rest of the team a lot of confidence. Look, it's it's a 40-minute game. You just want to – let's get it to halftime. Let's let it be close. Like, shoot, let's let it be like the Illinois game at halftime. Let's just not do it like the Illinois game in the second half. I mean, a 30 to nothing <laughs> run is ridiculous. Um, against a Power 5 team in the Elite Eight, that's unheard of. So, yep. I think it, if Alabama starts to get in trouble, don't panic. I think that's one of the biggest uh, pieces of advice I can give is just – Go out there and play your game. Don't worry about the score. Just keep shooting. Um, I think that's what Alabama's going to have to do. I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm the biggest Alabama fan you've ever had on this show, and I'm going to pick UConn to win. Uh, I think UConn will probably win between eight to ten points. Um, I, I'm okay with this because I think this is the beginning, not the end for Alabama. So I'm, I, I love our coach. I, heck, I love your coach. I feel like if there's any coach who yeah. symbolizes their program, it's Danny Hurley. He looks like the kind of guy who you would hate to play in a church league or at the YMCA or whatever because he still goes out there and plays every game as if the, the final four is on the line. And um, I think he's got that kind of attitude, so I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick UConn, you know, by eight to ten points. I think Alabama's going to make it a little closer than, than people believe, uh, and they're going to put up a heck of a fight. And Lord knows, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, no, I, um, those are all, uh, you know, I, I think that would be a best case scenario if you kept it close in the, in the first half, not to, you know, I think some of the, some of the games against Northwestern and even Illinois was trending towards a, uh, an early blowout. I think they started off the game nine, nothing. Um, and then kind of Illinois crept back into it, uh, before that 30 to nothing run that started in the first half and then extended into the second half. So, um, it's it's one of those things where UConn typically does one of two things. They either go on what what they what they're called kill shots, right? 10-0 runs. Um, and they had a triple kill shot, which I think we should get an NIL deal for Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks for that. I would love to yeah. go to my local Starbucks and say, Can I get a triple kill shot to go? Um, yeah. that would be that would be ideal for me. Um, is to have a either they do a kill shot, a 10-0 run, or they keep a program like an Alabama that shoots really well. They put them in a long drought because of their defensive uh, prowess, right? So one of if, if both of those things happen, you guys are in big trouble. If one of those things happen, what you're saying is correct. Just hold on. Maybe you can kind of shoot your way back into it. That's probably the only thing that I am worried about with the with the Alabama team is even if UConn starts off up big, you know, 10, 12 points, how quickly they can uh, get catch fire. And it's not just one guy. I think that, those are the those are the things that we mirror each other in. There's if we shut down Mark Mark Sears, which is a tall task, but we I feel like we have the guy to do it. Does other do other guys step up? And the answer is typically yes, right? Uh, at least in their historical history. But we'll see, man. I I, I obviously I'm also picking UConn uh, to win it all um, or, or win this game, and then obviously win it all. But I I, I think it's going to be closer to ten plus. So we're kind of lockstep there. I think I said they were going to beat Illinois by fifteen. I I was wrong by ten points in in a good way. Um, so if I'm wrong again on this and it's a 25 point game, I'm sorry for your fans, but I, I won't be upset about it. Uh, I've heard this said about Dan Hurley that he's very Saban esque, right? You're, you're a great coach that, uh, cause he's created a standard at UConn that these guys all try to live by. And so if there's ever a team that can appreciate that, I feel like Bama fans will look at this. Don't get past all of the craziness you see on the court. He's going to get on the officials. He's going to be yelling obscenities. He's going to be going crazy. But then look past it because that's what your coach used to do on the sidelines at Alabama. And it works. I'm good with it. Yeah, I know you are. I'm saying like I want I want the fans, I want your fans to know that like this is this is a part of there's a method to the madness. You know what I mean? Hey, like look, every we coach put up, this. 
we got to put up with Bruce Pearl here. So yeah, we're 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 good with coaches that get a little fiery. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel uh, on on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now and available on the free Fire TV channels app. Luke, any parting words for your Bama fans before I send us out? All I would say is, look, I went to the Final Four in 1992 uh, in Minneapolis. I saw Duke. I saw Indiana with Bob Knight. uh, I saw the Fab Five. Bobby Hurley was on that team, by the way, for Duke. And I saw Cincinnati with Bob Huggins just because I happened to – I had a friend in Minneapolis, and we went to the game got super cheap tickets, and it was awesome. I went to the National Championship game when it was Ohio State against uh, Florida in, in like, 08, 07, something like that. Yep, yep. In Atlanta. And – I'm going to tell. I'm going to this Final Four. Some of it was happenstance, but if I'd known, if if I didn't have tickets, I would have bought them. I'm telling every Alabama fan that I know: doesn't matter win, lose, or draw. Don't don't worry about the the outcome of the game. Go to the Final Four. The championship game is fine. The Final Four is awesome. The championship game mm-hmm. pales in comparison to the Final Four, if you ask me. With the with the two games back to back and the four sets of fan bases, it's it's unbelievable. It's 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 an incredible experience. Highly recommend all Alabama fans and UConn fans to go. Well, you're definitely going to see a lot of UConn fans there, some of which I know I will not be joining you unless you want to buy my ticket and fly me out. Uh, I'd be inter- I'd be interested in that, Luke. We'll talk about that off the, off the air. <laughs> uh, yeah. This has been another episode of Locked on UConn and Locked on Bama. I'm your host, Mark Sonetto, for Luke Robinson, wishing you peace, love, and go Huskies, and I guess go Bama, right? Roll Tide is what you say. Roll Tide. Go Huskies.